Good morning. Welcome. 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 To the Lahaina United Methodist Church. This is the fourth Sunday of from Easter. For those of you who are watching either Facebook or via Zoom, welcome to. Today is a special day. And we all know it's Mother's Day. And with that note, let me introduce something new this morning. I'm going to ask all the mothers that are here, apologize to the mother who are watching, we can only do this here. The Sunday School and the youth of Lahaina United Methodist Church have a tribute to all the mothers that are here. So I'm asking you mothers to please stand as the young people who's going to bring their candy legs as a tribute to you on your special day. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to allow my voice to wish each and every one, especially the mothers who are worshiping with us today, either here at Lahaina United Methodist Church or through Facebook and Zoom. Mothers, always know that you are valuable and an important part of our families, our communities, our countries, but especially our churches. You mothers are the essence and the epitome that exemplify the powerful and gracious women of the Bible. Mothers, you are comparable to Mary, mother of Jesus, for her obedience and respect for God's calling. She never questioned the will of God the Almighty. And she was the chosen one to give birth to our Lord Jesus Christ. Mothers, you are comparable to Eve, mother of Cain, Abel, and Seth whose name means life, because you mothers are the giver of life. You gave birth, you feed, 
you get those precious gifts from God. Our children. Mothers, you are comparable to Sarah, mother of Isaac, whose name means laughter, because that's who you are. You laugh through your joy and happiness, but you also laugh to hide the pain and the failures of disappointments. You are so good at hiding your emotion with your beautiful smile and laughter. Mothers, you are comparable to Ruth, daughter-in-law of Naomi, who demonstrated unconditional love and vowed that Naomi's people will be her people, that Naomi's God will be her God, and that only death will set them apart. Mothers, you are comparable to Telespeth, mother of Moses, who was determined and relentless to find a way to save her son from the wrath of the Pharaoh. She put her son with her heart in a wicker basket and let him flow down the Nile River right into the arms of Pharaoh's daughter and was saved. Mothers, you will always find a way to rescue your sons and daughters from danger. And finally, mothers, you are comparable to Queen Easter for her bravery and courage, risking her life. Listen. She said, I am going to the king on the behalf of my people. If he kill me and I die, let it be. Only a mother will have that kind of courage. So mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, mommies, nanas, aunties, and sisters in Christ, thank you, thank you, thank you for the great things you have done for us. Have a fabulous and blessed Mother's Day. Please rise for a call for worship. Let's begin. Christ is our shepherd. We are Christ's sheep. The shepherd is calling us to join God's flock. We will follow our shepherd. Rejoice, little one, for no one can snatch us from the shepherd's hand. In God's flock, we rest secure. Come, Come let us worship. Please remain standing for a hymn of praise. Come, Christian, join the sing. <laughs> Come, Christians, join to sing. Alleluia, amen. Loud praise to Christ our King. Alleluia, amen. Let all with heart and voice before his throne rejoice. Praise is his gracious choice. Alleluia, amen. Come lift our hearts on high. Alleluia, amen. Let praises fill the sky. Alleluia, amen. He is our guide and friend. To us he'll condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia, amen. Praise yet the Lord again. 
Alleluia, Amen. Life shall not end the strain. Alleluia, Amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness we'll adore, singing forevermore. Alleluia, Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to join in with vow to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and mother figures that are here today in our congregation and those that are watching us online. It's a wonderful blessing to be able to celebrate this day t together. Uh, also, this is a day that all of our ministries celebrate. Uh, we, uh, the Tongan ministry will have a beautiful service at 1 o'clock today. And one, five, 5.30, okay, sorry, 5.30 today. And, and uh, so that's, I mean, many of the flower, all the flowers here are, are donated from that ministry. Uh, they do all the flowers for us. It's great to have Val here as our liturgist because last week he presided over the children's White Sunday service. And that was a day when the Tongan community celebrates the children. And the children make professions of faith and they get up and they sing songs and uh, it's, it was a wonderful thing. I, I recorded it, so those of you who would like to watch it, we have a YouTube page, uh, Lahaina United Methodist Church .com, or United, Lahaina United Methodist Church on YouTube. If you look for that, you'll see us. Also, our Facebook page, it was uh, live streamed. So uh, go back and check it out. Uh, see how wonderfully these kids, these children, uh, had uh, performed and just professed their faith to their families. And it's a great testament to the mothers in the church. So with, uh, with that opening, I'd like to get on with our prayer of invocation. Let us pray. Mother and God, we remember those who have nurtured us, protect us and help us grow. We remember our mothers, those who are here with us and those who have gone on uh, before us the wonderful work that they have done in our lives to raise us. Our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers, all of those people, those women in our lives who have nurtured us. And those mother figures in our lives, those who have stood in sometimes when our mothers couldn't. Uh, so we, we honor all of those people today. We give you thanks for homes that accept us and affirmed us as your precious children in the shelter of your loving care. And we pray that you fortify us as living stones and build us as a, to build a spiritual home for those who are looking for refuge, as our mothers did uh, when we were growing up. For you, Christ, are the cornerstone. You are our foundation. And we pray in your name. Amen. Now is the time where we share the joys and concerns uh, submitted to our church. Um, we have a, a website. Some of the, the requests were submitted through our website under the prayer requests tab. And if you'd like to leave a prayer request for us uh, that we can mention an, in uh, uh, an intention in the service, and we can also put uh, your name in the bulletin so that we can pray for you throughout the week, uh, you can do so by going to lumcmaui.org slash prayer dash requests, or go to our website and hit the prayer request tab, and that's lumcmaui.org. So after, I'm going to, we received many prayer requests, so after, I'm going to group them, and after each group, I'm going to say, Lord, in your mercy, and if you can reply, hear are our prayers. Our thoughts and our prayers are, are with the family of Janice Marquith, uh, who left us to be with God on April 29th. We pray for her daughters Doreen and Dina and grandsons Trey and John, and we pray for God to provide them for comfort. She will be greatly missed. We pray for healing for Jane Emanuel after knee surgery uh, this past week, and we pray for Frank and family as they care for her. Prayers for baby Evelyn in the neonatal ICU after a difficult birth. We pray for her family. Prayers for the people of Ukraine. We pray for them during this time of war, and we pray for peace. Pray for Daryl Taylor, uh, who had a recent cardiac bypass surgery 
and we pray for a smooth recovery. Prayers from Lise's family in the loss of her auntie in New Zealand. We pray for Chris Welland, who's struggling uh, to keep up hope as he is not making uh, progress fast enough to be able to speak and move about after his stroke. We pray that God can fill him with encouragement and, uh, and also uh, that the healing process can bring him back uh, to the, where he would, uh, is comfortable. We pray for Warren Carthen and family in the recent passing of Susan from ALS. Prayers for comfort and peace. Prayers for the family of Reverend Isaiah, Fonda's cousin who passed away suddenly in Tonga. Prayers for love and support for his young family. We pray for Ralph and Pauline Nault who are recovering at home after a serious accident. Prayers for Loti Mafilai, who's struggling with medical issues, and we pray especially for relief from pain. <clears throat> Prayers for Shirley Reisinger and Pamela and Brad Hurt, as, uh, uh, the, with the recent passing of Paul, a great friend of our church. Um, all of them are members who are, who are uh, part-time members of our church, but they're members of our family. Uh, we're blessed to have them here today, and we just want to surround them with our prayers uh, during this time of mourning. We pray for Phil and his family. Uh, Phil has anxiety. He and his dad are struggling financially, and Phil is praying for God to direct him in his ministry calling. We pray for his brother Billy, mother Ruth, and Raul. Uh, we pray for God's guidance, assurance, and provision to Phil and his father. Prayers for Jamie Adams, uh, who has a severely broken wrist and uh, a long road ahead for recovery. She so appreciates our prayers. Prayers for Carlos, showing some improvement but awaiting test results. Prayers for the family of Lisa Adia in her recent passing. We pray for Sandy Wong, who's been in and out of the hospital with AFib and difficulty breathing. We pray for the Chavez family during these difficult times, for Lorraine, Steve, and Jackie with struggling with health issues uh, and in uh, need of financial support. We pray for Joe, who's struggling with cancer, for Phil, seeking a permanent relationship. May they trust in God's daily presence and salvation. Prayers for Chris Armitage and family and the recent passing of his son to a motorcycle accident. We pray for Heather Coffey, Prayers that she will accept assistance from all those waiting to help her discharge uh, uh, from rehab, after discharge from rehab. We pray for Patrick Murata, who is now in rehab in Santa Clara, California. We pray for Kevin Olivetti's sister, Ohena in Tonga, who is struggling with kidney disease. For Riley Hope Jacobs, 20-year-old granddaughter of Linda and Dave Cantrell, struggling with health issues. We, help that we hope, we pray that she can find some relief and healing. And for prayers for Lissini, Fonda's mother, uh, in the hospital in Tonga. For these prayers, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those struggling with cancer, for Julie Reed, recently diagnosed with cancer and now undergoing chemotherapy. For Barb Deary, a dear friend of Edie Machonis undergoing a treatment for brain cancer. Prayers for Ellen DiGiampolo's brother Carl and his wife Ginger, who are both struggling with cancer. We pray for Lori Ramsey, who's fighting stage four colon cancer. We pray for Denny White, Joan Stockman's brother, who is battling leukemia. We pray for Whitney Miller, fighting skin cancer. And we pray for Kelly Hessen family for continued healing after surgery for cancer. For these prayers, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now some ongoing requests. We pray for Vanessa's uncle Nito, who has medical problems. We pray for the Ebison family, for Nathan and Lynn. For, for, for Lynn and uh, we pray for Lynn, uh, grandfather of Montana, uh, but especially for Nathan and Montana, who are experiencing difficult times. We pray for Marceline, who's struggling with chronic allergies. 
and we pray for Linda Takahashi and her husband, Les. For these prayers, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, prayers for our community and country. For our leaders as they struggle with foreign policies and difficult decision making, we pray for peace for Ukraine and help and safety for all their refugees. We pray for all nonprofits, churches, and community leaders working to solve the homeless and housing crisis here on Maui. We pray that our friends at the Maui Rescue Mission will continue to receive the financial support and moral support that they need to continue their mission. And we, pray, we, we thank you, Lord, for all the good work that they're doing to feed our hungry and homeless neighbors. We pray for the Salvation Army who are working with our kapuna and members of the community in need. We pray for protection for all of our uh, first responders, uh, for police, for medical staff, uh, those working out in the community, uh, responding in need, uh, fire department, people in the fire department, uh, all of those that are serving our community. We pray for those struggling with the effect, after effects of COVID, financial instability, loss of loved ones, delayed recovery from illness, and the psychological challenges that the disease has brought to them. We pray for the teachers in our community as they work with our children and all the parents who are trying to return their children to schools and those who may be struggling financially. We pray for the victims of natural disasters for help in rebuilding their communities. May God provide comfort. We pray for the people of Afghanistan. For all the churches that are struggling presently in this country, may, they, may there be a revival and a new spirit growing with them as they pronounce the gospel and shed a, shine a light of hope to their communities. We pray for racial reconciliation in this country that will honor, respect, and value all racial and ethnic identities. We pray for an end to violence and a commitment to loving our neighbor, loving the migrant and stranger, protecting our children, and helping the poor. And for all these prayers spoken and those that you may have in your heart, Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Loving Shepherd, we trust your promises. You say, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will ever snatch them out of my hand. And we rest secure in your love and trust that you will lead us into life. As we pray for our friends, loved ones, neighbors, and community, we know you wish to gather them into your sheephold uh, to safety and security. Show us, Lord, how to feed your sheep, heal and nurture and encourage those we lifted up in prayer today. Guide us in our actions and our prayers. Help us to better proclaim your kingdom to those who wish to find it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in our unison prayer. Let's begin. Loving shepherd, we join and we follow your voice today as we gather in the house of the Lord to worship you. You provide us abundantly, even in doubt, even fear, and even to return away. Open our hearts today, Lord, to hear your word, which guide us to become faithful disciples, guide us to become your shepherds on behalf of your true church. Amen. Scripture reading today from the Old Testament, Psalm 23, and I will read from the New King James Version. Please follow along in your bulletin on the stream. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before for me, before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <coughs> Second reading from the New Testament. Book of Revelation, chapter 7. Once again, I will read 9 to 17. And please follow along. After this, I look. And there was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation. From all tribes and people and languages. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one elder addresses me, addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where did they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robe and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will sell to them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the affirmation of faith. Let's begin. We are not alone. We believe in God's world. We believe in God. As a for the Jesus, the Lord Working us, and the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live in respect and to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified in his for our judge and our hope, in life and in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone, thanks be to God. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. And as I call our choir up for the offering today, I'd like to mention that we're not going to be handing out an offering basket, but if you'd like to leave an offering, we have bowls in the back of the church, and we appreciate your offerings that you've given us. Aloha and good morning. As we celebrate Mother's Day today, we ponder on all the good things that we can think of our mothers, right? Some of those things are prayer warriors, courage, sacrifices, and their love for their God. The song that we're about to share covers all these things, all these characteristics. And it's called a pious mother. I hope you enjoy it.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise be to creatures here below. Praise ye above me, heavenly homes. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Let's pray. Good Shepherd, we thank you for your tender care. Everything, everything we have comes through the goodness of your love. Help us to keep growing as disciples led by your voice through the Holy Spirit. May we become more devoted to good works and acts of charity so that others will be blessed in turn. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Our hymn of preparation today is Close to Thee, and the words can be found in your bulletin and on the screen if you'd like to follow, uh, sing along. Now my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, all along my pilgrim's journey, Savior led walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, all along my pilgrim's journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, not for ease or worldly pleasure, nor for fame my prayer shall be. Gladly will I toil and suffer, only let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, all the blood of gave eternal your let me walk with thee. Veil of shadows, bear me o'er life's fitful sea. Then the gate of life eternal, may I enter, Lord, with thee. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. Then the gate of life eternal, may I enter. Our scripture reading is from John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. And you may follow along in your bulletin. At the time of the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem, it was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. So today as we celebrate Mother's Day, I think this scripture passage is, is a great passage to go along because it talks about the tandem influence of, I think we, today we can focus on the tandem influence of God in our lives as the shepherd leading us along. And our mothers have that role of, of raising and nurturing us, our mothers and our grandmothers oftentimes, or our great-grandmothers and mother figures. Our family has a special place in our hearts for mother figures because when my grandmother was young, at five years old, she lost her mother during the, uh, the flu epidemic of 1918. So she was raised by a wonderful woman, or at least uh, shown, her father raised her, but uh, this, this woman stepped in to show my grandmother all the things that a mother shows a child. And her name is Mrs. McKenna. So we remember her today too. 
And today on Mother's Day, we remember the selfless acts of these women in our lives. God works through these women to mold us into who we are today. Psalm 139 has a great passage that talks about how God works along, worked alongside his mother in his formation, starting when his mother carried him in his womb. For it was you who formed me in my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and woefully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. Our mothers carried us when we were most vulnerable. They taught us how to smile, eat, speak, use the bathroom, read, and God's grace was there and available to our mothers along the way, and they guide us as we learn today. There was a nice little story in the Maui, Maui Now and, and a lot of, in various newspapers about a local woman uh, named uh, Miley Crutzen. She's from Kihei. And Miley had just won the Food Network's Great Chocolate Showdown. Miley captured the eye of the Food Network's talent agent when he found her Instagram page. And she put all of her unique treats on the Instagram page. And he thought she'd be a wonderful person to bring on their television show. Miley was forced to get creative with baking when her son Cyrus was diagnosed with severe food allergies. When my son was diagnosed, Miley said, he was allergic to so many things, it was really a grieving process. She loved to bake and she thought, how do I find these things that my child would love to eat because I can't make the things that I, have, I grew up with. And her efforts to create unique healthy treats for her son became a lifestyle and she explored new recipes. She said, with the pandemic and the lockdown, that was when I really wanted to start to learn how to bake all the things that I always thought were too hard. I was just like, what can I make that's safe for our family and a creative outlet? And then also bring to our neighbors uh, to share with them and to check in on them to see how they're doing. When the Food Network's talent agent contacted Miley and asked her to appear in the baking competition, Miley prayed over her decision with her husband, Ken. And it's not often when you read an article in the newspaper that somebody shares her faith and how that helped her in the process. So I thought this was a wonderful uh, example of, of how the faith works in her life. In fact, through prayer, Miley was able to take the scary di diagnosis of her son Cyrus's food allergy and turn it into a blessing for Cyrus, for her family, and for everyone she encountered and, her, and all the people that read this article. Um, if you search for her name, Miley Crutzen, you'll find a bunch of things on the internet about her. And Miley recalls a conversation she had with her husband, Ken. Every step of the way, we were just like, let's just pray about it, and let's just keep walking in faith. Our gospel message today confirms Miley's discernment process. Jesus proclaimed that he is the good shepherd. His flock hear his voice, and when we listen for his voice, we find our way to everlasting life. Jesus gave his proclamation on a Jewish holiday, the Festival of Dedication. We know this is today as Hanukkah. And it's interesting because in the Gospel of John, Jesus often makes pr uh, pronouncements, proclamations about who he is on holidays. And I think this is, happens to be because Jesus is in the temple and that's where the, the leaders confront him. These uh, leaders were, uh, were confronting Jesus's, Jesus about his identity. Jesus performed many miracles and they wanted to know if Jesus was telling the awestruck crowds that he was the Messiah. They did not believe that Jesus was, was the Messiah. They thought that Jesus might be a sorcerer. They expected a Messiah who would come to command armies to defeat the Romans and drive them out. And Jesus was clearly not a military leader. So they wanted to catch Jesus in a blasphemous comment and have him arrested. Now our reading today is from our Pew Bible, the New, New Revised Standard Version, and it translates their question, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. However, the first part of this translation is not really literal and not really accurate. There's more nuance in what, the, what, what is actually said here. 
The literal translation is from the Greek idiom, Iro Hymon Psyche. And it, it, that doesn't mean keep us in suspense, but it, remi it means remove our breath of life, remove the life from us. How long will you exasperate us, is basically what they're saying. How long will you continue to annoy us? They were not in suspense. They didn't really care what Jesus' answer was. They had already made their minds up about who Jesus was. So Jesus, as we know, was more than what these religious leaders understood a Messiah to be. Jesus did not come to save the Jewish people from the Romans, but he came to save the world, he came to save all people. So he came to save his, the people that he grew up among, his, the Jewish people, his culture, and he came to save all cultures around the world. Jesus responded that these shepherds, to the, to, responded to these shepherds, who Jesus called earlier in this chapter false shepherds, that they, that they would not believe what he had to say if he told them. Essentially, he said, I have told you and you do not believe, Jesus answered. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. It is a matter of faith. One either comes to believe that Jesus is their savior or they don't. These leaders didn't believe and their minds were closed. Jesus eventually did say, when he did say the father and I are one, they tried to stone him. So those who come to faith do so in different ways. Resilient faith requires an open mind. It, it requires somebody, a mind that is resilient enough to face life's challenges. While some, like the Apostle Paul, have come to faith through instant conversions, others, like me, find faith, finding faith was a process. I struggled to believe in a God that cared about me for many years. I was brought up Christian. I attended Christian youth groups, but I was always questioning things and too impatient to wait for an answer. Much like Thomas, I, was question, I question everything and I seek answers. I still do. I considered, I considered myself at the time a spiritual seeker, and I, and, I looked in, and I read about other religions. However, I found that what I was seek, seeking was, was, uh, what was what I originally learned as a young Christian, and I came to faith over time. And I understood that Christ's message of radical love and redemption was the truth on which I wanted to base my ethical and moral choices. One day, when I was going through a particularly low period in my life, I called out to God I, when I had nowhere else to turn, and I felt God's presence assuring me. I really can't explain it, but I felt that I could face my problems more calmly. My oppressive thoughts faded away, and I had a series of revelations that led me down a course of life that had profoundly changed me. I went from a shy introvert to someone that can stand and, and speak to people. And the epiphanies, the insights I obtained from the circumstances in my life, and the people, especially, that came into my life at just the right moment to encourage me, I believe that these are the means by which God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Through my walk with Jesus, I recognize this voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Psalm 23, which thou had read to us beautifully today, the, shep the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, shepherds in the Middle East during biblical times and, and even today are nomads. Often t uh, they're often nomads, and they rarely own the land on which their sheep graze. They move around from pasture to pasture. And the terrain in the Holy Land varies from deserts that bloom in the springtime to a Mediterranean climate with grasslands. Shepherds had to move their flock constantly from one place to another to find green pastures. And while they traveled, the shepherd continuously calls out to the sheep so they follow him. And the sheep know by the voice of the shepherd which one is their shepherd, which one should they follow. The shepherd leads the sheep to still waters, down safe paths. Much like sheep 
we tend to wander from the flock. We also stray. And sometimes when we can't hear the shepherd's voice when we are in trouble, Jesus comes to find us. K.P. Yohanan was a famous Indian evangelist who started a very successful missionary organization called Gospel for Asia. GFA trains and supports thousands of indigenous preachers and workers to care for poor families, slum dwellers, widows and orphans, and provide clean water through uh, funding wells. The organization also supports medical missions that help those in Asia still suffering from leprosy. So there are 3.5 million people in this organization. And it started out very small. Yohannan was a very young, he was a young man, 24 years old, who had left India to come to America to study. And he married a wife from Germany. And while he was studying, he became a pastor of a small church in Texas. And he served there for a couple of years. And he loved it. He loved it because he was able to, he ministered among people who are Native Americans. And his wife, uh, when she was a young girl, was very interested in reading about and studying Native Americans. And so he loved this ministry, but in the midst of his ministry, he received a call from God. He felt to lead and start an organization in his native India to train local missionaries to carry the gospel to vast unreached areas of Asia. Yohanan and his wife did, decided to sell most of their possessions and, leave, and quit his job at the church. And they took the money they got from their possessions and they started funding eight missionaries in India. They were penniless for the first few years, living day to day, and constantly tempted to abandon the project that they had no when they had no money even to buy gas or groceries. If somebody would not come along each time, out of the blue, to help them, they would, not, they would have given up their work and looked for other work. Yohannan says that at one point when their cupboards were bare, some anonymous person left two boxes of groceries on their porch when their cupboards were bare. One Sunday, he was in a church, uh, and he had one dollar in his pocket. This was back in the 1970s, and one dollar could buy you gas. And uh, he, he did not have enough gas to fill up his gas tank to go home, so he needed that dollar to go home. But when the offering basket came around, he decided to put the dollar in the offering basket. And he didn't know what he was going to do until after the service, some man came up and shook his hand and in his hand was a folded up $10 bill. And he never saw this man again. So these things happened during this low period of his life. And when the psychological burnout feelings, when those feelings came and crept over him, he felt sorry for himself and the hard life he was leading. But then he heard a, a voice in his mind, in his head from God and in, his, in, in this voice, it said, God said, I'm not in trouble that I need someone to beg for me or help me out. I make no promises that I will not keep. For all who join with you in it, in your work, it will be a privilege, a light burden for them. Eventually, Yohanan stopped seeing his work as a burden that he must bear, but as an opportunity to serve the, with, uh, and walk with the shepherd. And with this mindset, he would eventually grow his ministry, joyfully served. And, uh, and he was able to grow this ministry into a very large organization today. Uh, he's famous throughout th that region. And so to those who hear the voice when Jesus calls, Jesus promises that I give eternal life and you will never perish. No one will snatch you out of my hand. Eternal life can begin today when we find meaning and purpose in our lives. We can feel as if we are born again, that our lives start again as we have a fresh outlook on the things around us. Miley Crutzen found her calling to, when she, she faced the, the difficulty of providing uh, nourishing food for her son, and she felt inspiration to bake something unique, creative, and share them with her neighborhood and eventually share them with the world while she was on television. And in doing so, she inspired a large television audience. At a young age, K.P. Yohanan left his home in India to acquire training and to get the resources he needed to build an organization that would train the local ministries that would bring help and hope to people, millions of people throughout Asia. Life 
in Jesus's ministry requires us to continuously uh, str uh, st question, to continuously search for answers, to, to pray. This is why we're prompted to pray regularly, to, to listen for the voice of God. Jesus' life and ministry was evidence for all people that God loved the world. Jesus promised that those who believe in him will see God's grace in their life and have access to God in ways never before possible. The wonderful uh, truth of the incarnation is that God is near. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit and through prayer and reflection, we can hear God's voice and walk in abundant life. Amen. I'd like to go over a few ministry updates, but before I do, I have uh, a couple of, of announcements. Um, first, I'd like to note, I mentioned today that, um, that uh, about Janice Marquith uh, and that we were gonna have a funeral service here in our, in our church. Uh, the funeral service is scheduled for Wednesday, uh, May 18th at 10 a.m. And if you can join us, uh, we'll also pro uh, provide a video of that as well. Uh, but that'll be here. Um, I will send out notices, but uh, if you can remember the date today, uh, Janice Marquette's from, uh, funeral service and, and our, our celebration of life will be here at 10 a.m. And now it has come to my attention that, my, that our organist has a day job. <laughs> <laughs> and she has just, uh, uh, she ser after serving 30 years, uh, as, uh, honorably and distinct, distinctly, uh, distinctively, and also de in a dedicated to, uh, um, to, to the service in our community. Roz is retiring this year, and they celebrated her last legislative session, I believe, on Thursday. So those of you who saw it in the news. So we'd like to just give a little token. I think somebody has a card out there that was going around. Thinking, okay, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're so blessed to have uh, to have had uh, Roz serve our community for at least past 30 years. And uh, we're so blessed to have her continue as our organist. So thank you. <laughs> uh, after our service today, uh, our gift shop, the Koinonia Quarter, Corner, will, is open. It's just around the corner. And in there are beautiful items, gift items, uh, some hand-drawn cards, some unique uh, stationery, all sorts of wonderful, beautiful things in there, hand-created. And if you are visiting and you'd like to bring back a unique gift to your family or friends uh, back on the mainland, uh, check out our gift shop. you uh, probably find something really nice in there. Again, it's just downstairs around the corner. And the proceeds for that go to uh, the upkeep in this w almost 100-year-old church. We will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of this church on October 22nd of this year. Uh, it was built in uh, October 22nd, 1922. The congregation's a bit older, but they bought this site uh, back then uh, to build a nice, beautiful, permanent home. And it's such a unique, beautiful building here on Front Street. And so we're um, doing some renovation projects here. Uh, we're, uh, we're painting, we're doing some paint, painting work and we've uh, set aside money in our reservation, reno, renovation fund and uh, many of you have already contributed to that fund. Uh, and we thank you so much for your dedication. If you'd like to give, you, give to that fund, you could do so by writing a check to a building fund and sending it to, to our uh, office or uh, online through uh, lumcmaui.org slash building res renovation fund. 
or there's a link on our webpage. Since today is Mother's Day, I've decided it's probably not a good day to have our, our Bible study after <laughs> everybody's been going to brunch. So we'll be having that, uh, postponing that in a couple of weeks because next week we'll be having an admin council meeting uh, here. We have a couple of important items that we want to address and we're gonna have a special admin council meeting next Sunday after, in the sanctuary after the service. This afternoon at 5.30 is the, uh, the Mother's Day service for, um, for our Tongan ministry, and that'll be here, and we will live stream that as well. 7.30 p.m. today, the Spanish uh, ministry is going to meet here. Pastor Carlos and Pastor Nuria lead that, and that they have services on Wednesdays at 7.30 and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. And English is a second language class. Uh, I think he's going to be starting that up again pretty soon. He does that normally on Tuesdays. Uh, but if you're interested, or if you know somebody interested, um, uh, have them call our church and let us know. And, and Pastor Carlos will give the date. I think he's usually here on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And I think he's starting that again. Our Maui Rescue Mission, uh, the Maui Rescue Mission, uh, who, who helps um, the homeless in our community provide showers and places to watch clothes, uh, clothes that have been generously donated by many of you in, here in our church, um, and also um, access to uh, lists to get on, uh, sign up for housing and get medical care. They meet here on uh, every Friday except the first Friday of, of every month. So they will be here this Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, breakfast is provided, uh, thanks to Melise and uh, and, and Michael, who prepare breakfast for uh, the group every Friday, and also uh, lunch, which, uh, pizza is provided as well. The, uh, at, we, at the Maui Rescue Mission, we have a Bible study at 11 a.m. as well. And uh, that's all I have again today, so um, let's get on to our closing hymn, which, will, which is God Will Take Care of You. And if you follow along in the bulletin, sing along. Sing along. Please stand, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Take 
take care of you. After our benediction today, we'll gather together in our circle of, of aloha uh, and sing the Hawaii circle uh, and, and sing the Hawaii aloha, circle of ohana. So those of you who would like to join the circle, please do so. I understand at this time maybe you're not comfortable, so uh, it, that's okay as well, but uh, we're, we're going to start doing this again. So those of you who would like to join, uh, join in our circle of, of, of ohana, and we will sing the Hawaii aloha together. So, may we always trust in the good shepherd's voice, shepherding us along the way through the difficulties of our lives. And as sheep, as listening to, the, listening to our shepherd, help us to direct others. Help us to be shepherds for other people. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. 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 Yeah.